Welcome to Highland Academy of Canada. I'm going to be introducing to you a course, BAF 3M Accounting, and it will show you a sample of how the technology is going to work for our virtual classes. So let's just assume right now, as a teacher, I'm going to uh, invite my class from Toronto, I'm going to invite my class to begin our session, because that's when we're supposed to start. I'm going to click on my Teams, open it up. My class should already be ready in their classroom, and I'm going to invite them shortly into the class to join. In this case, I have my accounting class. I do teach other classes here as an example. When I'm going to my General tab, I'm going to invite my class now for our first lesson for Unit 1. I'm going to call this um, Unit 1, Lesson 1, and I'm going to meet now. Hopefully all our students are going to be ready. Johnny? Johnny. Yeah. For those students who haven't come on board, I'm going to just mute all our students here. For all those students who have not yet joined, I can actually call and invite them. So here I am now, under Teams, and I have a few of my uh, students and my uh, TAs on staff, and the first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, start our lecture. So I can tell right now that all my students in this particular class have been invited. I've muted them so that they can hear me as opposed to me hearing them, and I will start out by uh, saying, hello students, how is everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to start with our first uh, uh, lesson. Uh, but before I start with my first lesson, I'm going to ask that all our students, if they can do me a favor and please uh, go to your Teams. And if you're to go into your files here, you should be able to find our accounting course syllabus. If you're to click and open that, you should be able to see our uh, accounting course. Syllabus, the breakdown of the units. So the first unit is introduction to accounting. The length is going to be 24, 25 hours. And you can see also the breakdown of how our assessment's going to take place and how we're going to be assessing the course. Feel free to browse this document um, later on at your convenience. If there's any questions about this course syllabus, um, I'm going to invite now any students to just ask any, any particular question you have about this particular document. I'm going to click on Start Conversation, and I think we should be able to have a little bit of a conversation about if there's any questions. Please do ask questions. And here I'm saying, any questions? So uh, Rowena has asked, uh, how many tests are there for this particular course? Let's just take a look, uh, take a look here. Um, the tests we have about, uh, it's worth 50% of the course, so this is accounting. Most of the assessments or evaluations are going to be tests. And it's, I think it's reasonable to say we're going to have approximately four to five tests, and each test will involve about four chapters. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, Rowena, could you do a, a check mark beside your thing if, that, uh, if the answer makes sense to you? Excellent. Great. OK. If everybody is good, I'm going to ask if everybody is good. Is every, everyone good to continue? All of you can just simply put a check mark beside that, if you see here. Beside the, is everyone good? I have one so far, two. I should get around four or five. Good. OK, uh, Stuart asked the question about ISU. Uh, ISU is an independent study unit, basically a unit in which students will work uh, on their own on a particular unit within the course. Um, is that OK, Stuart? A 
Excellent. Okay. Now what I want everybody to do is let's go back into Teams. So click on your Teams. And I want you then to click on Conversations. And I want you to go to join back into our meeting. You can click on Join. I should be able to see the participants. Excellent. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a PowerPoint lecture that I have for our first of two lectures that I'm going to be doing. Let's take a look. I press this over here and let me just make that to full screen and let me browse to open up my particular file and it's in my accounting folder and it's just a basic uh, uh, PowerPoint lecture. Let me click on the first one and I'll go through it quickly. As you can see, it uploads. And I'll quickly, briefly go through this lecture. And we will continue it. So, as I was saying before with regards to accounting, Okay, there's always an interaction or a transaction that takes place. So in this case, for example, you have a payment for the exchange of the purchase of a car. So this is what we consider to be an economic event. Uh, in this case, what the accountant or the bookkeeper is going to do is they're going to identify that economic event and they're going to record that event. After they record it, they can, of course, report it and analyze it. Just imagine there's more uh, transactions that take place, and they're going to be able to summarize those events. And, of course, we talked a little bit about the forms of uh, organizations that we have in businesses. You have non-businesses. So we have the three that we talked about, a proprietorship, a partnership, and a cooperation. Um, and we talked about the differences between them. So really briefly, what I mentioned to you before is that in a, co cooper a corporation, it's its own legal entity, whereas proprietorship or partnerships, they're not. Uh, in, in essence, if you want to know the difference between a co corporation versus a partnership and a proprietorship, if the owners of a corporation actually pass away or die, the business actually doesn't close. What happens is whoever is assigned as their uh, people to take over the business will continue the business. So the business or the cooperation corporation actually still lives on and is allowed to remain in existence, whereas the other entities aren't. As we said before, there's all kinds of users of the accounting information. You might have internal users like the company's managers or owners, or even analysts within the company. Um, different groups or different departments within the organization might use the information, like a marketing or human resources or purchasing. Sometimes they have to work within budgets. And of course, to, in order to be able to keep a track of your budgets, you have to be able to, uh, to, to, to do it that way. Okay, let me just open this up for any kind of questions so far that we have from, from the students here. Uh, any kind of questions or comments, feel free now to talk live. Go ahead. Michelle, how are you doing? Is there any questions that you have? No? Any comments? Anybody, anybody have any, any kind of uh, questions or issues? Black? Let me ask you this question, Black. So, which do you think is the riskiest type of business to own? A sole proprietorship, a, a partnership, or a corporation? Uh, I would just partnership. Why partnership is you think is the most risky? Um, because for partnerships, um, uh, my partner, we like a pair of the friends and the weekend. Talk about something very uh, close, you know, and uh, 
to do some organization. We will, um, I would say that I will not um, too much different suggestions, and mm. we can do something very easy. Okay. What about William? What, what do you think? What do you think is the mm. riskiest, riskiest form of ownership? Partnership, sole proprietorship, or a cooperation? Corporation. What is the most risky? Yes. Uh, I, For the owner. Yeah. Uh, I think it's. Um, sole proprietorship. Why? Because uh, unlimited liability. Unlimited liability. That's a very good answer. Very good. Okay, uh, Lachelle, what do you think? Of the three, which one are the most risky? Sole proprietorship? Um, Partnership or corporation? Proprietorship. Yeah. Okay. So we let me answer this question in a moment, but we have two questions that's been posed by uh, by Rowena for us. Can a co-op corporation hire outside people to do their accounting? The answer is yes. A corporation you can hire someone to do your accounting, and even if you have a sole proprietorship or if you have a partnership, you can hire someone from the outside to or to do your own accounting. You can outsource that task. And the second question that was asked is, can a partnership be more than two people? And the answer to that is, again, yes. You can have as many different partners as you want. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that there is no legal protection for partnerships between the different partners. So let's say if the company, or not the company, but if the partnership got sued for whatever reason, and it's... Let's say all the partners put enough money to have $1 million assets within that partnership, but you got sued for $2 million and the partnership lost that lawsuit, the courts could be able to go to the private property or assets of each individual partner based in proportion to their ownership of the partnership. So you're not protected. So... The difference here is if you had a, a corporation and you got sued and you only had a million dollars in the corporation, but you were sued for two million, you could only go after all the assets that exist under the company, the corporation. You can't go outside of it. And so there is a essentially a layer of protection that exists uh, between the owners and the actual and the actual um, uh, uh, company itself, if that makes any sense. Okay, very good. Let us now do the following. I'm going to continue with the presentation a little bit more. So, as I said to you before, the entire purpose of accounting is to be able to identify, record, and communicate uh, transactions that have happened with the company that you have. So let me ask Black one more time. Uh, Black, what does it mean to identify? What is it that you are identifying? Um, I think like an ID. Like, um, it's called a trans transaction. A transaction. And what is a transaction? Okay, let me, let, let me remind you again that a transaction is something in which you have bought something with money, yeah. right, cash, and exchanging it for something else. So when you buy a coffee, is that a transaction? Yeah. Yes, okay. When you pay money to get coffee, that's a transaction. And where's the proof? Where's the record of that transaction happening? What do you get when you pay for a coffee usually? They'll ask you if you want it. It's called a re receipt. Excellent. So you get a receipt. That is the record. And usually if you're buying it with a company's money and you're going to say, I want to be paid back for that coffee, what are you going to give the accountant or the bookkeeper? You're going to give them that receipt to show proof that you purchased that particular coffee. And that accountant 
will record that transaction in their bookkeeping. And eventually, they'll communicate that transaction and many more in other, in the, in the, basically the bookkeeping of the company, otherwise called a general journal, okay? Let's continue moving here very quickly. So as I said to you before, this was when someone purchases something, they have the payment, right? And something is exchanged for it. We gave the example of a coffee, but it could be a car, it could be almost anything. That's the transaction. So a couple of terms that we have to remember here are transaction, right? Recording. Um, journal is where they record that information. Okay, so we just used a couple of examples um, there. Um, okay, let's see here. Now what I want to do is I want to do a, a really quick test. Okay, so I'm going to ask all the students right now to please focus on the board and click on the assignments tab. And as you can see here, you have the accounting test. I want you to click on it, and then I want you to click on the link that exists there and begin to do answer the questions on the test that you have. You may begin now. So now that we've uh, received all the test results back, let's take a look at what we have. So I'm like taking a look over here. I go into my link for the test. Here's my test. I want to see my results. And here are my results. So here it's showing me, for example, for this question, um, I have half the students answer correctly, because this is the correct answer with the check mark, correctly that the answer is all of the above. I had one student answer that it's the management and another student answer that it's lenders incorrectly. Uh, as you can see, I can publish this, I can give this back to my students, and I even have the option of opening this up in Excel to be able to tabulate the information if I wanted to use it for future uh, referencing or recording the answers uh, that the students have actually done. And if I double click this, it should open it. As you can see, it indicates the start time when the student completed the test, uh, their email, uh, the name of the students, the total points that they got, maybe any kind of quiz feedback if I wanted to give it, and the answers that they gave to each particular question. So there's um, uh, information that's provided, which is very, very useful. So that uh, essentially uh, concludes uh, this part of the sample course for accounting. I hope that you had a good introduction to it. And uh, if you have any uh, follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to contact uh, the necessary person in Highland Academy of Canada. It's been a pleasure being with you. Thank you, class. Thank you, everyone. Take care.